Good morning, Knicks Nation. Today is Wednesday. It is the second day of February 2022. I hope you're healthy. I hope you're COVID free. I hope the needs of you and your family in terms of food, shelter, clothing, as well as health are being met today. Blessings upon those that work in the healthcare field and those that are the first responders trying every day to save a life. Blessings upon those that pick up garbage for us, to keep our streets and sidewalks clean, and those that also plow snow to keep our streets and sidewalks safe. Blessings also upon those that make deliveries in all kinds of weather for our convenience. Double blessings on the people, the men and women trying to deliver the victims of prostitution and child prostitution, the victims of pornography and child pornography, the victims of human trafficking and sex slavery, the victims unfortunately, of child molestation and pedophilia and double curses, double curses on the perverts and profiteers who traffic in this human misery. Finally, blessings upon the homeless. 600,000 men, women, and children on the streets of the United States, Super Bowl or none, and millions around the world in similar or worse conditions. Blessings upon them and those trying to help them, for theirs is the kingdom. There will be a basketball game tonight at Madison Square Garden. The New York Knicks are going to be taking on the Memphis Grizzlies. We're going to talk about that in a second. But I wanted to highlight today's real highlight, today's major point is we have some now we have some clarity on what I'm calling the hashtag free cam campaign. We have some clarity on that campaign. And of course, that has a lot to do with the upcoming trade deadline. A couple of things. I was searching through the news yesterday as a fanatical Nick fan that I am, and I was looking for updated information. And I found something. I found a couple of things that I found very important to what we're talking about here. First thing was from Shams. Now, this came out, actually, uh, it's dated the 19th. Of January. So it's like two weeks ago, but I didn't see it until yesterday. And this is from Shams, and this is what it says. The Sacramento Kings organization has a current mindset. They are not moving star De'Aaron Fox and want to center team around Fox and second year guard Tyrese Halliburton, sources say. The Kings have no plans to currently trade De'Aaron Fox. We'll center the team around him and Halliburton. The Kings have informed, listen carefully, Fox and his representation, Chris Gaston of Family First Sports, that they do not want to trade him. That takes Darren Fox off the market. And it probably means Julius Randle is staying a nick through the trade deadline. Second piece of information that's very important regarding Jalen Brunson. This is from Monday. Report, no Navs Knicks active trade talks about Jalen Brunson. The New York Knicks have been forever linked to Dallas Mavericks rising point guard Jalen Brunson. And this is from Mark Stein, NBA insider. So it's not one of my three sources, but Stein is probably a step below them in my view. So he he could be believed, Um, not as much as the other three, but for the most part. So here's what Stein says. Um, The NBA insider Mark Stein reported on Monday that the third year anniversary of Christoph Porzingis trade, that there are no ongoing discussions between the Mavericks and the Knicks about Brunson. I'm told, he says, that the oft-suggested notion of trading Brunson to the Knicks to reacquire the 2023 first-round pick owed to New York to complete the Christoph Porzingis trade is not currently under consideration in Dallas. The Mavericks regard Brunson as too vital to this season's aspirations to trade him and retain the belief that he wants to be a Maverick long-term. The Mavericks are willing to gamble and are banking on their bird rights on Brunson to re-sign him this summer. So they do retain his bird rights. They're planning on re-signing him probably even at the 20 million a year. So what does that mean? There's no Rick Fox coming to New York. Oh, Rick Fox. <laughs> no, there's no De'Aaron Fox coming to New York and there's no Jalen Bunsen coming to New York. So we could take those off the table. OK, and some of you still have the silly NBA 2K notion that Anthony Simons is available. He's not. 
Let me tell you what Portland's going to do so we can end this foolishness. And you can see after the fact that I was telling you the truth. They'll probably trade two of the three players I'm going to name. They're going to trade C.J. McCollum or Yusuf Nurchitz or Robert Covington. I think Covington is the last one they'd like to trade. I'll tell you why in a minute. But they're going to trade two of those players for the express purpose of being prepared to re-sign restricted free agents Anthony Simons and Nasir Little. Nasir Little, under the radar, has been quietly playing like a baby um, Dennis Rodman before he got hurt. He hurt his shoulder. He's out for the rest of the season, but he'll be back. He's young. And so they drafted these two kids. They developed them, and they're going to keep them long term. I think what they're planning to do, because Dame Dollar's done, they're going to shut him down for the scene for the stomach surgery, the abdominal surgery he had. So they're going to probably try to make a run with Dame Dollar and them two kids along with whatever veterans they could keep. They're also trying to ship out Norman Powell to also make clear room. They want, they don't want back players necessarily. They want back expiring deals so they can sign these two kids and, and pair them with Dame Dollar. So you can take Anthony Simons off the table as well. Deion, DeJounte Murray is not available. Okay. So there's, that's another guy you could take off the table. So now the Knicks clarity is being made as to what's going to happen. Now, this is what I think is going to happen. I'm about to tell you what raw Hebrew is going to predict for the next, in the next eight days. This is what's going to happen. You're going to see a return to deuce time. That's number one. You know what that makes me happy. You're going to see a return to deuce time. Don't worry about all these fools talking about because he's in the G League or he can't do this and that. Have never really studied him or looked at any film of him or understand anything about basketball. No, you're going to see a return to deuce time. And he's going to be ready. He just had 39 last night. Again, I'm not surprised at anything Deuce does. I told y'all this kid was good. And y'all know, a lot of y'all that follow me know, I predicted Grimes and Deuce to the Knicks from the draft. So it's not like I just started looking at these guys. Okay? So, but you're going to see a return to Deuce time. Aside from the free cam campaign. Now, how will this happen? Guaranteeing you, Kemba Walker's not going to be a Nick after February 10th. I don't know whether they're going to trade him. I don't know whether they're going to waive him, but he's not going to be a Nick after February 10th. Okay. Number one, I always thought, and I still do. If you want to guarantee Cam Reddish playing a prominent role in the Knicks going forward, you really would trade both Fournier and Burks. If you want to make sure, cause in, let's look at the scenario of that happened. It probably won't, but I would like to see that. Kemba's gone. If you trade Fournier and Burks, now you have IQ starting at the point guard. You have Grimes starting at the two. And then Mob Deep consists of Obi and Cam and Deuce and um, probably either Nerlens or Taj. They've been giving Taj less and less minutes recently, uh, if you notice. He's been getting a small and small amount of minutes as Nerlens is healthy or semi-healthy. So that depends on that. But that's what you'll see. Obi, Cam... And uh Deuce, and then of course when D Rose comes back, that'll be Mob Deep. D Rose is not coming back for the rest until the end of the month. So there's that. That's what I'd like to see, but probably won't happen. You're going to see Kemba gone, and it's either Evan Fournier or Alec Burks. It's going to be one of those. Now, there's let's look at both scenarios. So we can see what what we're talking about in both cases. Okay. For those of you still listening, <laughs> let's look at both scenarios. So let's say they traded Evan Fournier. Um, so Kemba's gone, Fournier's gone. You still got Alec Burks. What Tibbs would probably do is start Burks at the point guard. You start Grimes at the two, right? Then in that scenario, you would eventually have D Rose, IQ, OB Toppin. And Cam Reddish is mob deep with Deuce coming in, you know, spot minutes. Uh, what do you call that situation in that scenario? Um, that would give Cam and Grimes a lot more minutes, though, if you're trying to free Cam. Uh, that would definitely give him a lot more minutes. And then you'd have, uh, again, IQ and D Rose. And temporarily for this next week, you would have IQ and Deuce, you know, as your, as part of mob deep, if that happened. The second scenario. If they kept Fournier and traded Alec Burks, now you would have 
with Kemba going, you would have IQ starting at your point guard. You would have Obi, uh, Cam Reddish, and Grimes, along with Deuce McBride in your mob deep unit. Okay, and then whoever's healthy <laughs> to help spell Mitch Robb when he needs a blow between Nerlens Noel and Todd Gibson. That's what you would have. Okay, so in the second scenario, I don't. I like it for Deuce. I don't like it as much for Cam, um, because I'd to, for me to get Cam the maximum minutes in Mob Deep, you need to start Grimes to me, and you're not going to start Grimes unless you trade Fournier. A lot of y'all don't get it. Still, I'm trying to explain to you. It ain't that Fournier is not playing well. He is, but Fournier, listen, he's not the future. Grimes is the future. Okay. And everything that Evan Fournier can do, Grimes could do better. Period. Okay, period. That's what makes Fournier expendable. Now, either of these contracts can be moved. Either of them. But if I had to guess, I would say that Tibbs wants Fournier to go away with Kemba because Tibbs didn't want these two guys to begin with. I would say that's Tibbs' brothers. He'd rather have uh, Burks. Keep Burks and let Fournier go. And of course, he don't want Kemba anyway. So he'd rather see both of them go. And in that scenario, I think Tiz would like to see Burks starting at the point guard, which I don't want to see, but you'd see that. And then you'd have Grimes starting at the two. That's going to still be a good unit. You got Burks, Grimes, RJ, Mitch Rob, Randall. Okay. That's a pretty good defensive unit right there. And so, um, I know Tiz would probably want that. But I don't know now, but the ultimate decision maker is Leon Rose. So if Leon, now of the two contracts, though, mo both contracts to be moved, you know, now it's now out in the news that Cleveland is looking to move Rubio's contract. It fits with Fournier. And they said they're looking to move him. Guess what? For a shooter. That fits. Okay. So. That's that. Then we know now that Utah just got a $9 million exception from the NBA for Joe Ingles. That happens to be exactly what Alec Burks makes. You see, so we'll see what happens. But um, I can see more teams wanting Burks than Fournier. And that's because of the contract. So Burks's contract at nine million can be moved to any playoff team will want that. Okay, any playoff team will want that. Okay, any playoff team will want that. So um Burks is the easier contract to move, but either of them can be moved, especially when you're dealing with the Don, who we know plays chess. So, and this is the thing. The Don and Tiz have known each other a long time. They, they respect each other. But there's definitely going to be friction. Because, and this is the thing. Tibbs is that gym rat type dude that all he cares about is winning and grinding, right? Okay. Uh, so he's more of a checker player. <laughs> and when you're dealing with a master chess player like the Don, Tibbs ain't going to win. Plus, when the Don is in the, you know, he's in the this final decision maker seat. Tibbs ain't going to win. But the Don ain't unreasonable. And I know that they'll try to work something out together. So I don't know which one of those two guys are going to go. But Kemba and one of those guys are going. Kemba and one of those guys. Like I said, if it's up to Tibbs, they keep Burks. Because he loves Burks. Burks can, you know, the Swiss Army knife. He can play off the bench. He can start. Um, You know, his defense has gotten a lot better from last year. So so Tibbs loves Burks. He can, he, you know, he probably want to keep Burks if, you, if they're going to ask Tibbs about it. Um, they're going to keep Burks and trade Fournier. But that may not be. The Don doesn't always do exactly what Tibbs says. As we know, he brought in Kemba and Fournier, you know, but then Tibbs didn't want them. So the Don might decide, I'm going to trade Burks and, and keep Fournier. He might decide to do that. And if he does, that signals deuce time for real. You know, you trade Burks. Now you're gonna have to start IQ, and they're not bringing in the point. Obviously, no Brunson, no Fox. Forget Dejounte Murray. That's not happening. Neither is 
Anthony Simons. No, they, I don't think they want Goran Dragic either. He's expiring, but no. No, it would signal if you trade Burks, you're not only trying to open up time for Cam, but you're opening up time for Deuce. Okay? And at least until D. Rose comes back. You know, you're going to see Deuce time until at least for this month until D. Rose comes back. And I'm telling you, you give Deuce a solid month, even of a second team minutes over the course of a month. I don't know. It's going to be some hard decisions to make because this kid, he has not gotten that yet. And when he does, we're going to see what happens. Okay. So that's the scenario. Just the review. It's going to be Kemba gone with either for, and I said this last week too, either Fournier or Burks. One of those two are gone with Kemba. Okay. I would like to see all three gone, but I don't think they're going to do that. So they're going to pick one of those two guys, send them out. If they did get rid of all three, though, now you got Cam and Deuce playing big minutes. Now, now they're going to play big minutes. Okay. Um, and that'll be something else. I still, I really believe in Cam Reddish's talent. And to me, the more minutes him and Grimes get, the better the Knicks will be. Period. Even from now. I mean, even though they the future, they could both be now too. So I'm into that. Randall's going nowhere unless he goes to a team that I didn't mention. Like, unless it's not, you know, the Kings. And I was looking over the landscape and I can't see where we would get value in a Randall trade with anybody. You know, they're not going to give him away. They need something of value, right? And I don't see any value out there. And some of y'all talking about Russell Westbrook. Would y'all please stop? Oh, my God. Okay, let's just, you know, for y'all, let's just put it this way. He is owed 22 million for the rest of this season and 47 next year. The Knicks are not, listen, they're not paying almost 70 million for this cat over the next year. And a half. that's not happening. Okay. No, no. And John Wall for what? <laughs> the NBA 2K crowd, y'all. Somebody suggested I get a shirt that says stop the 2K. You know what? I might do that because <laughs> some of y'all tripping. No, that NBA 2K got y'all all jacked up. So, no, we ain't going after no point guard right away. And that's why it was reported by the gossip colonist, <laughs> Mark Berman, <laughs> that the Knicks are planning during the All-Star break to go visit Joe Kubitis, take him out to dinner, whatever, whatever. So, to me, that signals they're going with the youth on this point guard situation. We don't need to go, uh, you know, gossip colonists goes too far. Talking about they need to package all these guys for a star. Hell no. We just need to develop. We got our star. We got a couple of guys that's going to pop in our in our youth movement. Okay? And they may, eat, the more you play them, the sooner you play them, the sooner you find out who they are. I could tell you right now, RJ's already popping, and I think Cam is behind him. Obviously, Grimes is popping, and I still think Deuce is going to pop, obviously. So... I think we got something here. So we're going to see what happens. But that's the story. So tonight, they're going Memphis Grizzlies are like, they're like some of these snowstorms that's coming across the country. You know what I'm saying? Like, no matter where they go, there's a storm, man. They're coming. Um, I would not be surprised if because of knee soreness, Kemba sat tonight for a couple of reasons. Like, I don't, I wouldn't be surprised if he played because Cause Tibbs, if he could, if, if he could limp, he'll put him out there just to embarrass everybody. But anyway, um, the reason I say that is because John Morant, he's going to eat up whoever's trying to guard him between Kemba Walker. Well, it's Kemba Walker. You could forget it. Forget it. Forget it. That's, that's going to be nightmare. Nightmare. Okay. Nightmare. Um, and they, in, in, in Memphis, Memphis just really this year, Memphis is kicking everybody behind. They play, not only do you have Ja, who is definitely a budding superstar, but you got um the defense they play. And you know what? They had Desmond Bain, who we know is good, Jaron Jackson Jr., but they playing, uh, they starting Zaire Williams out of Stanford. Now, he's a skinny kid. I thought he would be good. The Knicks were looking at him. I thought he'd be good. I wanted Grimes over him, which I'm glad we got him, but um he was taken earlier than I thought. I thought he'd be a longer term project. But you see, on other teams outside of New York, they play their long-term projects. You know, New York doesn't do that. But anyway, they're starting him. Um, I don't know 
what happened to um what's that guy's name? They got another guy that could play uh Dylan Brooks. He must be hurt because is he hurt? I'm looking on Oh, okay. He sidelined three to five weeks with a sprained ankle. Okay, that's what I'm gonna say. Dylan Brooks is the deal also. So they got him out of the lineup, but they got plenty, man, between Morant, Bain, Williams, Jaron Jackson Jr., Brandon Clark, Steven Adams. Um they got play Kyle Anderson. They got DeAnthony Melton. They got a nice crew, man. And they got him in the right positions. You know, DeAnthony Melton, is, Kyle Anderson, come, or Brandon Clark coming off their bench. That's their mob deep. They got a really nice situation. So, and then, of course, like I said, Jaws going to destroy whoever's out there. So I wouldn't be surprised if they sat Kimber tonight for quote unquote knee soreness because, and then he'll start Burks, you know. And, and Burks is a better defender than Kemba, obviously, but I don't think he'll, I think the only person the Knicks have, the two people the Knicks have that could guard that guy are Deuce McBride and Quentin Grimes. That's it. Um, they're not going to start McBride tonight, obviously. So, um, yeah, this is going to be, if the Knicks could win, this will be something. If the Knicks could win this game. Now, the thing is, is this, and this is again, it depends on the mindset and mentality of one Julius Randle. If he comes with the right mentality and mindset tonight, the Knicks can beat Memphis. If you see him arguing with the refs and sauntering up the court on defense, it's going to be a long night. That's, it's going to be a long night. Cause look, Thibodeau, that's his pet man. That's his pet student right there. He, he's going to let Julius, we, I know it's mad, but he's going to let Julius do whatever he wants. Jog back on defense. Half behind effort, you know, bad shots, turnover. He gonna let him do it. I mean, we just gotta accept that fact. Julius ain't going nowhere, and Tibbs gonna let him do that. Okay, so it depends on his mindset. Also, if they run the offense through RJ, we have a shot. We have a good shot. Okay, if they keep doing that, they got a good shot. All right, so it's gonna be interesting to see how it works out tonight. But that's that's the deal. And if we do run the offense through RJ, and if Julius does come with a correct mindset tonight and is ready to really put forth effort that a $100 million guy should put forth, we got a good shot not only to beat Memphis, but to start off this road trip on a really good note. So um we'll see tonight. It's going to tell us some things. But next eight days, you're going to see free cam campaign step up, and you might, you're probably going to see a return to deuce time in the meantime. Anyway... Y'all have a good Wednesday. Enjoy yourselves. Be safe. Shalom.